This is why you need a 3D printer. Hello everyone, Chris here, and my favorite type of 3D print is a practical one. One that can be very useful or fix a problem. And that's what I'm going to do here today, is share with you another issue I found here at the house that I could solve with a 3D print. I also want you to think about 3D printing during this video. If you don't have a 3D printer already, this might be the video that pushes you over the edge to getting one. Because I aim to show that 3D printing doesn't have to be difficult, you don't have to learn a ton to get into this hobby, and you don't have to know a lot about CAD, just the basics to create a useful part. Also, it doesn't have to be expensive. In fact, in the long run, it could save you some money. So this video is going to start in the most important room in the whole house. Welcome to Chris's bathroom. And I'm gonna start out by saying that this is one of the most challenging pieces of video that I've ever had to film because this room is only eight by five. So it's really tight in here. I'm gonna to try to get the best angles that I can. But here's the problem that we're gonna to fix today. This is the vanity in the bathroom, and you will notice that top drawer is actually hovering over the bottom drawer, and it's been broke like that for a long time. Now, I've been meaning to fix it, of course, but what's actually happening is the right rail is dipping a bit. So I thought maybe there was just a screw missing, something got stripped out. So let's take a look at that rail. You can see how much this upper drawer actually sags. It hits that top drawer. You actually have to lift it to get it to go back into place. But it's much worse here on this corner. There's not a whole lot of light in there, but you can see that slide down in here. If you lift up on the drawer, you can see it's completely loose. So there's definitely something missing. Now, my first thought would be this cabinet is just a little bit bigger than this drawer, of course. So there should be room in here. Inside that cabinet, I would have assumed that there was a piece of wood that ran down alongside it that they screwed that slide into. Well, let me take the drawers out and I'll show you what's actually in there. Here's that slide we were looking at, the one on the right from before, just at another angle. But you can see back there, right in here, there's a bracket. Let me get you a closer look at that. That's just an injection molded part right there. You can see the tabs on top are completely broken. There used to be some wood screws that screwed those tabs down to the side of the cabinet. The only thing that's holding it on are a couple of plastic dowels that go into lower holes there. So that's why it's moving up and down. The tabs are actually setting in the bottom of the drawer. Same for the front one. As a comparison, the one on the bottom there is actually intact. So you can see what it's supposed to look like. So as it sets right now, the only thing keeping that in there was the force of the drawer down on those dowel pins and the width of the drawer, of course. It was kind of sandwiching it in there. But as it sits, you can just pull this whole thing out. And you can see that injection molded part. The tabs are completely broken, the ones that used to screw down. And you've just got these plastic dowels that go into blind holes in the side of the cabinet. Definitely a great candidate to replace with a 3D printed part. On the other side of the slide, it's just a countersunk screw. This is the side that faces the drawer. It goes into that injection molded part. We should be able to do the exact same thing with our 3D printed part. So I wanted to sneak in a closer look at this broken part. You can see how fractured it is up here at the top. There's just a couple of screw holes in front. They only use one with that really coarse screw that goes to the slide. And then on the back, there's some dowels. I'm not really sure how it's lasted this long, just hanging on those dowels. This was completely broken though. It was sheared right here. There were some parts to the other one that had fragmented and fell in the cabinet. And the rest of them, when I pulled it apart the first time, they were just hanging on the side, completely separated. It used to fit like this. I pulled it all apart before the video. But you can see right here where they actually tried to shoot an additional screw when they made it for added stability. I don't know who designed this or why, but I would have thought it would have been way easier and cheaper just for a quick metal L bracket, some blocks of wood, I don't know, but definitely something we can recreate. And just to give you a little bit better idea of how this part's actually supposed to fit, you've just got these holes here that the slide goes on, again those dowels, but those dowels fit in these rough holes. You can see all four holes there, they've actually shot a couple of extra screws in it, don't know why, but you have wood screws at the top. Then this part, 
So it just slides in like that with those plastic dowels into those holes. That was the only thing holding the drawer up. So now let's design a new part. Now it's time to create the parts that we can 3D print to fix this issue. And I want to say that we're not trying to replicate the existing part one for one. We're just trying to create something that will be useful that's going to fix this situation. After seeing the stock part, we can probably easily 3D print something that's going to be even better. And if you're just getting into 3D printing, don't think that it's going to cost a lot for you to get software to be able to create your own parts. There's a lot of great free solutions out there. Even Fusion 360, it has a lot of features, it's very involved, but there's also a free license available for hobbyists, non-commercial use, so you don't have to pay anything for it. Of course, it does have some limitations, but it's more than enough to get you off the ground. So let's get into that. So here we are in Fusion, and I'm going to do my best over here to show you how I measure this whole thing to try to reproduce it. The good thing is on this part is it doesn't have to be that accurate. So let's just take some quick measurements here. Take our calipers. The only thing we really have to line up are the holes. So let's call this face here 49 millimeters by 24 millimeters. And notice that this part, it's square right here on the front and then it's tapered towards the back. That's probably just to be able to release it from the form. So we really don't have to worry about that much. So in Fusion, we'll just start. We'll draw on Z here with a rectangle. 49 by 24. And since the thing that's most important to me now is where those holes are located, that looks to be a six millimeter hole. And from the edge of this part, the center of that hole is about nine millimeters. I always wanna check both sides to make sure they're symmetrical. And this one's pretty good. And they look to be pretty center in the center of this part. So that'll be easy to find. And I'm gonna tell you this because there's a lot of experts on fusion out there, but this is just how I do it. I just use lines as my marking points because it's easier. I don't have to mess with constraints and things like that. I just do these parts really quickly. So I make a nine millimeter line. We'll finish that. And then I get over here. This will tell you when it's centered, nine millimeter line. And then we'll finish that. And we'll make a couple of circles. So we're just gonna go six millimeter. With the threads included, that should give us enough for that aggressive screw that comes in the cabinet to bite down on it. We shouldn't have any problems with that. So there's our front plate, nice and simple. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb looking at this part here that these dowels go right through to the front holes there. They should be aligned. So keep that in mind as we build this. But we'll go ahead and finish this sketch. We've got our front plate. These two holes here, they, we don't use them in this design, so I'm not going to put them in. We don't even use both of these. I just thought I'd go ahead and put those on there. But then this part is roughly 51 millimeters deep. So we'll add that in. And these dowels back here are 4.8. Let's make them 4.5 so we know that they'll fit. And they stick out from the back of this part about eight millimeters. So back to Fusion. Let's go ahead and just extrude this whole thing. We'll extrude these holes for now as well so we have a solid block. We're gonna go 51. And I'm gonna go back to the bottom of the print. I'm gonna turn that sketch back on because it does turn them off if you make that extrude. On the front of the part, I'm just gonna cut some holes so we can thread those screws in. So I'm just gonna do E to extrude and select both of these. And then we want to go into the part, let's call it 10 millimeters, because that should give plenty of room for those screws to thread into. And like I said before, we have those dowels in the back of the part. They should line up with these holes, only we're going to make them around four and a half millimeters, so they fit on the side of that cabinet. But just so I don't have to line up those sketches, I'm going to go ahead and turn this sketch off again. I'm going to extrude these. We'll do an E again to the back of the part right there. And then we're at 41. 
I'm just going to add 8 onto that to take it to 49. And we're going to do a join. So now we have our dowels, but they're too big. From there, I'm just going to make a sketch on top of these to the center with a 4.5. Make another one exactly the same over here on the left side. 4.5. And when you're done with that, you can do your extrude again. Just select this outer. And we'll take it down to the face. And we have our 4.5 millimeter dowels. So the important parts really are done. This should fit the cabinet and the slide. We just want to reproduce those ears on the top of the part. Now this was somewhat tricky because the parts were so broken, but I just put this together the best I could and did some measurements. These are just wood screws into the side of the cabinet. So even if you don't hit those extra holes, you're going to be fine. If you hit the hole just a little bit and maybe it starts to strip, you can use a slightly bigger screw. So that screw hole there, let's call that four and a half millimeters. And then I'm going to go measure from the dowel to this hole because I know the dowel should be in the right spot. The base of this would be too wide because it is injection molded. So I'm just going to make a quick judgment here. I think the ruler is going to be easier because we're just roughing this in. The center of that hole to the center of that dowel, let's call it 36. So from there, back to Fusion, I'm just going to make a sketch on the top of one of these dowels. And I'm going to do a line from the center. And we're going to call it 36. Make sure it's 90 degrees. And we'll do the same thing for that other dowel. There we go. That'll give us the length. So then we can sketch again and we'll set a couple of holes on the top of those lines. And we decided 4.5. That will give us some extra room if you do need to use a bigger screw. Now we've got where everything needs to be. So we can just build this back part. So I'm going to sketch again. Do the top of this bracket. And let's just make a square. We'll go from corner to corner. Let's make it five millimeters thick. That's going to be a lot sturdier than the stock bracket. That should hold it just fine, but still have enough room for the screw. Finish that. And then extrude this up. Just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm just going to bring it up enough that I have a lot of room for these holes. So we'll call that 29. That looks good. Now we can extrude these two holes through. So we'll just do extrude and we'll cut our holes. And then we can turn these sketches off. Let's add just a little bit to that. Let's do extrude. Let's do two more millimeters there. Gives us a little bit more part. So that's pretty much the basics of our part here. It's looking pretty good. Let's make it just a little bit more sturdy and functional. So let's do a chamfer around these holes so the screw has a place to go. Keeps the screw head nice and flush. We'll do two millimeter. And down here, let's make some supports. So I'm actually gonna sketch on this part right here. It'll turn it over. I'm just going to do a rectangle from the corner. We might have to eyeball this just a little bit, but we'll bring it out. Let's make it about four millimeters thick. I want it kind of in the center where that screw goes. We'll call it 13. That looks pretty good to me. I'll finish that and then I'm going to extrude this out. Call it 15. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to chamfer this part as well from here, just to give it a little bit of angle like that. That'll make that corner there a little sturdier. And since this is all part of the body, I'm going to split it so that I can copy it easier. So I'm going to split the whole body with this flat portion and then split one more time this side with this flat portion. So now this part is free. It's its own body. You can see it over here. I'm going to right click copy and then right click paste. 
I'm going to switch so I can see it, but now I'm going to move this second one to line up with this dowel over here. So that's looking pretty good. So now that that's over there, we can go ahead and do a combine because I cut everything up. Combine this part and then select these other parts. And now we're back down to one body. The last thing I'm going to do is do a fillet to make it even stronger. So we'll grab our fillet tool and we're going to get this line here. And then this one over here. Since this one is separate, we won't, we'll do that in a separate session. So let's just add some fillet to those. Let's call it four millimeter. It looks pretty good. And then fillet here. And there's our basic part. If you've ever done iterative design, you know it's not going to work the first time out. So you have to test it. And there's two sections of the part that I'm really concerned about. So these two holes, are they going to thread into that screw? So I want to print a test so I don't have to print this whole thing. So all I would do is just draw a sketch. I'm going to grab a line. I'm going to go straight through the front of this part. I'll just hit finish. And then I'm going to use cut split body and then use that as a tool. Now I have a body that's just this front end. I can print it out, test the thread of those screws. And then once I know that's good, I can make adjustments to my part or I can combine it again and then print the whole part. Same thing with those dowels. I'm kind of concerned that these holes don't line up because of it being a molded part, you could have squeezed this. So you, you might need to move these up, down, left, or right. So I'd like to know that those fit. So let's go ahead and split again. And I'm just gonna make it into this bracket. So I know that these holes up here on the ears are gonna line up too which those shouldn't matter so much, but I'm going to go ahead and make this flat piece here my splitting tool. And now I don't have to print this three hour long part. I can just print these little sections, fit it, make adjustments, and then put it all back together. Now, this part does have to be pretty sturdy, so you want to be careful how you slice it. And the thing you're looking out for the most are these dowels. These can snap off real easy. So we've got our part in the Prusa slicer here. I do want to print it in this orientation. That's going to make the supports easier. But I'm just going to shift to draft quality. I'm going to print this on a Mark III. I really don't care about layer height. These are functional parts. PLA is fine. I am going to bump up the infill to 40 because there are quite a few larger cavities here with this right here, this body. I want it to be sturdy. But the thing that's going to make it the strongest is if you go to print settings, I'm going to throw on four parameters. That's going to help those dowel pins to not break off. And of course we do need supports. So I'm going to kick on supports over here, build plate only, and go back to print settings and take a look at the support settings here. There's a lot of new support settings here in Prusa Slicer in the newer version. This is 2.4, but they are a lot easier to remove. So mix these up, Test a few things out if you want to before you print this part, but again, it's a lot easier than the old version. A lot more stuff to tweak as well. But this is the stock setting for draft, so I'm going with it. We'll slice. There's all of our supports. And if you take a look at those dowels that I'm most concerned with, go down through, they're pretty much solid plastic. So this gives it the best chance of those not breaking off. And those outer shells adding more, especially around the screw holes, that's going to make it a lot stronger. So now we are ready to slice and print. So there's just a taste of what I would do to recreate these parts in Fusion 360. But remember, this is iterative design. It's going to take a few goes before you get something that fits 100%. But take the guidance that I gave you, split that part, print multiple prints of smaller objects like to fit those holes or those dowels. Even if you had two 3D printers, you could print those sections separately and get the part done even faster. After you get the smaller section tweaked just how you want, put it all back together and give it a go. This is going to save you time, money, and plastic. So now let's get into the 3D print. <laughs> Thank you. 
And here are our new parts, our brackets for our drawer. Now, with these new support settings, a lot of this probably will come off when you try to remove it from the build plate. But even if it doesn't, it should be easy to remove it. This 90 degree angle here, all this stuff underneath is just going to come right off. Of course, it depends on the part, but they are a lot easier now in the new versions of Prusa Slicer. We got most of that off in one chunk. Of course, there'll be just a little bit of cleanup. So there's our part. It's nice and simple. It's a whole lot sturdier than that stock part. I mentioned before those dowels. I wanted to test fit those before, so I cut the part down and just tried to line up the dowels as best I could. The other one I was concerned with were these screw holes right here. Remember, this is PLA. Those are really aggressive screws, but they should just go ahead and thread right in here. At least as good as the stock part. So I would want to test fit those as well. I'd probably cut these down and fit it just to make sure they were going to thread in nicely before I printed out the whole part. But this one should be ready to go. The first thing that I wanted to test before we put all this back together was to make sure that that coarse screw that held the slide on was going to fit in our 3D printed part. This is PLA. That's a very aggressive thread. You just don't want to make that hole so tight that this screw cracks the plastic. This one should fit just fine with the specs that we put in. So I've got my new 3D printed parts on my slide. Again, we did a lot of cuts and test prints to make sure all this was going to line up. It was just really hard to film it. But everything should fit up. We're ready to just go ahead and slide our new dowels into the side of the cabinet. And there we go. The dowels on both parts fit great. I put them in the same exact spots on the slide. There is only one screw in each, so I just tried to get them as level as possible. Those wood screws up here, they should go relatively in the same holes. If they don't, you could use a little larger screw. But we'll go ahead and put those wood screws back in. And those look pretty good. That is nice and sturdy. Let's see if we can get that drawer back in there. Bottom drawer fits nicely, of course. But now, we're going to test our fix. And it seems to fit pretty well. The drawers meet up nice. It's a little tight on the first couple of goes, but all in all, looks pretty good. So there it is, another issue fixed with 3D printing, and the bathroom vanity is as good as new. And I do a lot of these practical type 3D prints around the house all the time. I don't get to share a lot of them with you, but I thought this would be the perfect project. So if you're just getting into 3D printing or you're thinking about purchasing one, this might be enough information to show you that you can create useful practical parts and maybe even save some money in the long run. And a lot of folks probably think that I could have just used a piece of wood or bent a bracket to fix this drawer. And that is true. But think about all the folks that have limited space. They don't have access to tools to maybe cut down a piece of wood or make a bracket. If they had a 3D printer, all they have to do is go to the computer, design the part, print it out, problem solved. So hopefully you found this interesting. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.